Good morning guys. Today is Monday and as you can see I am actually in a Swedish wonder winter wonderland. But let's get into it. Today you and I are going to talk about something really interesting. We are going to talk about the top three databases that I think that you should learn in two... I, I'm just going to say it. It doesn't matter if it's 2018 or whatever year you want to live in. You, you know, you, I'm pro-choice, just, you know, if whatever gender you want to be, that's fine as well. You can, like, why not live in whatever year you want? So, uh, let's, let's, let's actually get into it. I'm a little bit shilly, I'm gonna admit, but I'll, I'll soldier through it. So, in third place, the, in, on this top list of mine, I would suggest that you learn MongoDB. And I know, not now, the, all of the, like, super senior developers out there are gonna say oh why would you learn mongodb and just bear with me guys i will motivate every every suggestion that i make to you don't worry about it so the reason why i suggest that you learn mongodb is because not because it is the best database system in the world it's not but it is a document database and it's probably one of the most common no sql databases now there are a few others out there like one of my personal favorites is neo4j which is a graph database and the reason why i'm not recommending that is simply because graph databases and these more obscure like arango db and like these these other databases are less widespread the odds are in the world of no sql databases odds are that you will meet MongoDB or something very much like it, like the big, like Amazon and Google and so forth. They have their own database systems that are all document databases. Learning MongoDB, which is, as I said, probably the biggest brand in document database systems, is going to be very useful to you because you're going to learn how they work and you're going to have the easiest time to learn it because MongoDB is at least in my opinion they have among the best documentation it's very easy to get started i've even made a few videos about you know when you work in node and so forth that probably if you want to learn a database that goes very well with node mongodb should be your first stop in my personal opinion at least at small scale larger scale then we'll have a discussion about other database system solutions so in third place i put mongodb because it is such a massive massive brand and the odds of you meeting a document database in the wild as a professional is very high number one that's number three number two comes in and is redis redis is a it's a key value database it's also in the flavor of no sql databases and basically why i'm recommending this to you is because Redis is also one of those really, really common databases that has a very specific use case. It's very, very common that you use Redis for usually one of two things, either ses session management for users or caching. C caching is probably more common. I use it at my job. I've used it at probably in different various ways in, I think, I don't, I don't remember if we used it at Ticketmaster, but I do know that I've been using it for at a few other places as well. And most of the people that you know run their own star startups and have a little bit of maturity in the company use Redis in one way or another. It's a, it's very, very. I'm just gonna say it's very common to have it. Some people run their entire like if you have a lightweight application, let's say that you have a small phone app or something like a chatting application or something like that and some people just use redis like as their main database but you know i, I wouldn't recommend it it, it depending on, if you know what you're doing absolutely redis is as i said it's more geared toward a very specific type of use case it's the type of database that you use when you need very like easy storage basically key value storage where you Basically, you, you declare a key and some value, and then you just store that in a, fly, in, a, in a map, if you will. And if you just want to have like quick access to things. In, in, so I'm not going to go too far into the exact specifications of how it works, because that's outside of the scope of this video of mine. But Redis is uh, it's very common. It has a very clear use case. And odds are that you will most likely find yourself working in a company that has a main database and Redis in some, in some flavor. Like uh, at my company, we use MongoDB and Redis, for example. And yeah, so that would be my second choice because uh, odds are that Redis is going to be there somehow. 
and it's a really great database. I like it quite a lot and for small applications I actually, you know, I use Redis quite a bit. So those are my top two. And in the first, first place is going to be MySQL. Yes, and so the juniors or the up and coming programmers may not, like even you may know what I'm talking about and the seniors are kind of go, well, I thought you were going to say something cooler than that. And I kind of go, and this is where I go, no, I'm not going to go and say something cooler than that because if you don't know MySQL in today, I would say that that should be your first stop. And I know MySQL is not as sexy as Postgres. I know that it's not as like the fanciest database in the world, but it is still one of the most common databases, if not the most common database storage system in the world. And I'm basically saying to you that this is like for the juniors out there who haven't been using like haven't been programming or you know you haven't really been working with databases all that much you should know that mysql has for like it's the go, it's been the go-to database for years and years and years and years it's very well established i mean my entire education was based on it even before that it was the most common database like the really large companies still use it because it's been around forever it knows it's it does what it does very well and the reason why it's on my top list in 2018 is because frankly if you know if you don't know my 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 sequel you will it will be a very good first stop for you because once you learn that you will be able to pick up all like oracles and uh, like microsoft is like their relational database systems and you will be able to use postgres and all that stuff and the best part about it is that it's still one of the most common ones out there which means that you know if you learn postgres there's nothing wrong with learning learning postgres it's also a very very commonly used database but you know, if we have to say something definitively, something definitive about one over the other, I would suggest you start with my 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 SQL, my SQL, because you will more more likely find it out in the wild, the, the, like the the chance. There's nothing wrong with going to with Postgres. You can go with one or the other. I'm just trying to relay to you that my SQL is uh, it's uh, it's a little bit like it, it's a bit older been around a little bit longer and if you know it then you basically can go into postgres immediately afterwards so yeah i would say that that's my top list start by if you don't know my 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 sequel learn that first then i would suggest you learn redis and then finally i think you should have a look at mongodb those are my top tips for you to in in terms of databases hopefully you have a great day